As we've been working through this course, you may have noticed a pattern with each of our examples so far. And that is that one of the main use cases for creating classes in Python is to contain and represent data. Our code creates classes, like this book class here in the data class start file, and then uses the init function to store values on the instance of the class. And you might be wondering, well, if this is such a common pattern, then why doesn't Python just automate this? Why do I have to explicitly store each argument on the object by setting attributes on the self parameter? Well, starting in Python 3.7, you actually don't. In 3.7, Python introduced a new feature called the data class, which helps to automate the creation and managing of classes that mostly exist just to hold data. And that's what we're going to focus on in this chapter. So you can read more about data classes at this link in the Python docs. But for now, let's go back to our code. And let's begin by converting our book class into a version that uses a data class. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is import the data class from the data classes module. So from data classes, I'm going to import data class. And again, this only works in 3.7 and later. So make sure you have at least that version of Python on your computer. Next, we're going to use the data class decorator to indicate that the book class is going to be a data class. Then we get rid of the init function. And let's go ahead and fix the indenting here. And we're going to get rid of each of these self keywords because there's no more self keyword right now. And then we need to annotate each of these attributes with the new type hints that were introduced in Python 3.5. So I'm going to get rid of each of the equal signs. I'm going to write title and then colon stir. And then the author is also going to be a string. So that's a stir. Pages is going to be an int. And price is going to be a float. And guess what? That's, uh, well, that's pretty much all we have to do. Now, there's quite a bit going on here, so let me explain. At first glance, it looks like what we're doing is defining class attributes instead of instance attributes. But what's going to happen behind the scenes is that the data class decorator code will actually rewrite this class to automatically add the init function, where each of these attributes will be initialized on the object instance. And the second thing you notice here is these type hints. These are required for data classes to work. But in keeping with Python's philosophy of being flexible, their type isn't actually enforced. So you can see here, we have some existing code that creates some book instances and then accesses some fields. And we don't even need to change our existing code as long as the parameters are passed in the same order, and they are. We've got title, author, pages, and price, so everything looks fine. So let's go ahead and run what we have. I'm going to save and then run this. So here in the output, you can see we've got the title and the author of, what is that, book one and book two? Right. So we can access attributes on the objects just as we could before. But data classes have more benefits than just concise code. They also automatically implement both the wrapper and EQ magic methods we learned about earlier in the course. So for example, I can add a print statement here to just print out book one, and we can compare two objects with each other. So I'm gonna make another book that has the same values as book one. I'll call that book three. And then I'll add a comparison to see if book one is equal to book three. All right, so now let's go ahead and run again. And you can see that the printed output of the book object automatically contains all of the data attributes and the equality comparison also just automatically works. 
All right, so one more thing to demonstrate for our intro to data classes. So they are just like any other Python classes. There's nothing really special about them. They're a Python class just like any other Python class. So if I want to add a regular Python method to my class, it's really straightforward to do so. So I can just go ahead and create a method called book info. And I'll just return some formatted string that contains self.title and self.author. And then let's go ahead and modify some attributes of one of the books. And then let's go ahead and call that method v1.bookinfo. All right, so let's go ahead and comment out some of these others. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see that our book info method works just as expected. So data classes let you write a lot more concise code and skip a lot of the boilerplate that comes along with the init method and initializing object instances. But at the same time, they're just regular Python classes and you can use them just as you would any other Python class.